So today I'll be reading from the script. I've got a script. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Paul. If you have been working with Python for a while now, you would have definitely heard of the word PIP, the PIP Package Manager. Essentially, we use it to install external packages for our works. We use it to install dependencies for the kind of projects that we take on. So for example, you go ahead and do a PIP install Selenium, PIP install Flask in your terminal and you get Flask in Selenium in your virtual environment or on your computer and you can use those code. Now, what is a package? Package is essentially a collection of modules, something we call modules. Then you would ask me what is a module. A module is basically a collection of different Python files or basically a pre-written Python code. So essentially someone has written the code down to do something and has packaged it into a module, and then into a package, and then they have put it out there, then you do pip install, the package name, and then it comes to your computer, used for your project and a lot of things. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own modules. Now, why would you want to create your own modules? When you write code down, when you write functions down, it's only for that specific project. When you are done and you are working on another project, you end up writing the same functions again, over and over again. And this is bad. You can write one module and use it forever. Also, working with one single file is not good. Let's say you have thousands of lines of code. It would be very difficult for you to debug this thousand, you know, thousands of lines of code. You really suffer because you have to scroll through and go to that, that specific line that you are considering. It will be very stressful. So if you are using modules, you can split your code into separate files and then be able to import these files into your main Python file. And then you are you'll be able to use the functions, the classes, and everything that you have in that module. As I've already said, I'm coming to show you how you can create your own module. So I'm going to start off by making a directory that would work in a, file, a folder. So I'm going to make dir tutorial. So basically, I'm calling my folder tutorial. So I'm going to open up this folder in any code editor that I have. I'm going to be using VS Code now, so I'm going to just type in code tutorial. And if I run this, basically, just going to open up the VS Code window with that with that folder opened in it. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. I'm going to expand this. Now, before we begin. I'm going to increase the font size of this VS Code window so that everyone over here will be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to increase the font size of the editor to 20. I'm also going to increase the font size of the terminal to 20. I'm going to go ahead and save this file and yeah, I'm going to close that. What I'm going to do now is to create a file. I'm going to call it main.py this would be the file that would be working in the file that we want to import the module from now i'm going to go ahead and create a new directory for the module and i'm going to name it the name i want to give the module i'm going to call my utils as in utilities now inside this module or directory i'm going to create a new file name it double underscore init double underscore dot py this init file will tell python that this utils folder is the module to recognize it as a module just as we do in function in classes you create an init function that is always called when the class is created now inside this init file what i'm going to do is to create um, a function for calculating the square of numbers i'm going to define square and i'm going to take a number as a parameter i'm going to go ahead and write a small comment for the square function, I'm going to write function for calculating the square of numbers. Now, after I finish writing that, I'm going to return the square of the number. So number star star two, which is essentially me saying that number to the power two. So this is my function. I'm going to go ahead and save this in its file. I'm going to go back into the main main file and i'm going to import the utils now that python is recognizing it as a module so now i can do utils dot and a dot will allow me to access everything inside the init file so i'm going to do utils dot square which is the function inside over there utils dot square of 34 and i'm going to assign that to a variable called result i'm going to go ahead and print out result to the user just to show what we are doing i'm going to ahead save this file and I am going to run it. Now, as you can see, it has given me the square of 34 as 1,156. If I go ahead and change that number to, let's say, 3, we know that the square of 3 is 9. And if I run this file, it's going to give me 9 as the result. So, we are confident that the function is working. 
Now, more often than not, you wouldn't want to cluster every single function in here. You would want to, you know, group the functions based on what they are doing. Different files for different functions. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file for math functions alone. I'm going to go ahead and create that file. I'm going to call this file math underscore functions dot py. I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to go ahead and cut this function from the init file. And I'm going to send it to the math functions file so that there will be some kind of organization over there. Now, inside the init file, since that's the only file that I have access to, it means I have to be able to import the math functions from there. So what I'm going to do is to do from dot. Now, this dot is a reference to the current directory. So I can access other files inside this directory. So I can do from dot math functions, which means that from the math function in the same directory as the init file, I should import star. And importing star is like importing everything, which means that the square inside the math function could also be used inside the um, init function. Now, when I go back to my main.py file, I don't need to change anything because I can still access the square from the init function. So if I go ahead and change that number to four and I run the thing again, I should get 16 as the square of four. So it works. We were able to access the math functions from the init file and we're able to access the init file from the main file through the utils module so basically we have created a module that is working so now i'm going to go back into our init file and instead of writing it like this and importing everything from the math functions i would like to be more specific about it i'd like to import specific file so I'll do from dot. So from my current directory, you should import a file called math functions. So from dot import math functions. So it means that what I actually have access to is the math functions file, not the square function. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do utils dot math functions dot square. So it means I have to go through the math function before I get to the function called square. So utils dot math functions dot square. And you see. I go ahead and run this i get 25 since i've passed five as the number and that's how you create a module in python so that's how it's done now i really, I really want to entreat all of you to start using modules start working with multiple files don't just use a single file and write a thousand lines of code in there and say that you have done a project it's not cool a lot of people will not be able to you know go through your work and see what you have done because it's a lot of lines of i can't take your work and be able to scroll from the first line to the you know maybe ten thousand ten thousand <laughs> ten thousand line i think there's a way right all right for the record, this video is not scripted and I really thank you for watching this. If you really enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I would really appreciate that. It helps the channel grow and it helps me you know, also know whether you like the content or you don't like the content. That's it. I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.